the discussion that we have today is about the advent of OTT services and how it has transformed the entertainment industry in India and across the globe. So very warm welcome to our panelists and thank you for making the time today. Uh, I'm sure everyone is eagerly waiting for you to uh, you share some of the opinions, trends and what you think about uh, this new phenomena that has transformed the entertainment industry completely. Uh, also, what I'd say is that, you know, uh, not only uh, OTTs, but the pattern of entertainment consumption has changed in several ways and is changing in several ways across the world. We're seeing that uh, uh, there are more personalizations, uh, more ex immersive experiences coming to the user's way and more original content and space for more original content that is transforming this industry. So I want to start with um, a question around how these digital technologies have sparked a transformative wave uh, in the Indian entertainment industry in particular. How are you seeing um, that these trends uh, that we are driving towards are going to contribute to the evolution of the industry going forward? So, Sajit, maybe we could start with you. Maybe switch it on with a... Yeah, okay, yeah. thank you. And thank you for having me, having me here. I, I recognize it's a uh, post-lunch session, so we hopefully will have something interesting to say so that people uh, you know, are engaged. But you know, when I, th when I think of the question you asked, uh, Shilpa, see, we're, we're very fortunate, right? I mean, in the sense that, look, for anything, for, for digital to sort of grow in the manner that it has, you need some foundational things in place. And, um, and those are, <clears throat> you need an infrastructure, you need um, digital identity, you need uh, low cost access. Uh, and the beauty is that all of that is very much in place and has been in place now for, for a few years. And, uh, you know, as a result, India and Indians consume amongst the most number of per capita, you know, gigabytes per month and data costs are amongst the cheapest. So once you have those foundational elements in place, you'll start to see what we are seeing. Uh, and of course, uh, you, you know, when, when you have as much content that India sort of produces, that in itself creates, you know, a groundswell of sort of transformation, et cetera. And unfortunate though as it was, COVID also accelerated, right? Because all of a sudden, you know, means of entertainment was far fewer. We would never have an event like this, for example. And uh, people gravitated towards watching um, content at the time of their choosing, mostly at home, uh, but whenever they wanted. And, 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 you know, so it really started to grow. But I think for me, as far as I'm concerned, I see that those foundational elements are in place and they're very pervasive across India. You know, this is not related or, or just confined to a few cities. You know, low cost internet access, uh, now increasing number of smartphones, in, uh, you know, the now increasingly more connected TVs at even lower price points. So it's one thing after the other that, that constitutes this incredibly strong foundation on the top of which, you know, over the top services and, and of any kind, streaming otherwise, are all now sort of starting to, to, to serve. No, I think uh, this is an insightful observation in itself because <coughs> we've seen across industries that most industries are caught unaware. In this case, there was the right infrastructure in place. There was always um, the writing was on the wall of how this transformation is coming and the industry is also very well prepared. Rohit, what are your views? Shilpa, I want to add, it. I think at the end of the day, what are we doing? You know, if, if you look at it, we, we are fortunate in a way that as a country, we've had storytelling as a part of our culture for thousands of years, right? Every successive technolo technology has only solved for providing more access, more reach to people, right? So cinema has been around for 110, 115 odd years. 
that took it took the content telling storytelling forward from your nukkad sort of natak right all of that but it was still limited to a certain geography uh, because you know typically it'll have a sort of catchment area uh, and then tv came in um, and in fact actually doordarshan came in and that allowed access to reach few crore home uh, then cable and dth came in cable came in and then dth which took it to sort of lot more home probably about 17 18 crore home um, ott sort of the, you know and its successive technologies streaming today is i think in a way democratizing the entire reach the difference between have and have not as a result today uh, you know we are everybody is watching content from every part of the world um, audiences today are watching content in more languages than ever before you know i i probably consume language in uh, content in five languages three of them i don't even speak or understand but it's beautiful cinema um and that per se is making transformational changes because for the first time we are now starting to look at india as one market and we are breaking the barriers from saying it's hindi speaking or telugu or tamil to say okay one market and we are equally looking forward to watch a sharuk movie as an allu arjun or as a vijay in tamil and uh, as a result the box office potential has gone up tremendously you know the days of 1000 crore box office movies are not far behind and i think streaming has a played a tremendous role in making that access happen and hence people connecting to content so in that sense like i said we are sort of solving for have and have not solving for reach uh, the storytelling was always around uh, yes with more people watching it you have that much more data coming in so you know uh, the the entire what might be boring after the lunch that stuff around data is there you know uh, but eventually whether it's streaming or or you know food apps or travel apps they're all solving for everybody being able to get access to or you know same things at the same time i think rightly said it is universal access suddenly uh, and that means for universal reach and it is also good news for advertisers as much as it is for the industry ashwini what are your views thank you for calling me here uh when i was called i didn't know what i was going to speak but i think i have something here as a creator to speak uh i think it's the best time for us as creators as storytellers to tell all kinds of different stories so at one point of time uh, we were like you know there are only certain kind of stories we could tell in a certain languages because that's what was available to us but today uh we have all kinds of storytellers whether they are young directors or they are very senior directors or young writers very senior writers everyone has a space in the world of storytelling because of the platforms which are available and also in the language they are most comfortable in uh given a choice where where one form of cinema was seen in one language today like rohit said that we could see it in 10 different languages and when my film is seen um across board in the language which the uh, consumer wants to see it in uh, i as a storyteller uh, feel good about it is because uh, because my story is there in their uh, i would say phone i know it's a wrong word to say but for me the, that phone is one of the most important things is because when you are in a uh, at the airport and uh, or at a railway station or you're just watching around you see everyone on their phone one way it is really bad but for me it is really good it's because i can see people watching your films there your web series there and it is such an amazing thing and i'm very always curious i don't know how much how many of you all are but if you are a part of this industry i would always been very curious that who is watching what in a flight because that shows the consumer pattern it shows that what what are you watching and what is what they are interested in uh, to see someone in the early morning flight i had a flight at 7 in the morning and 5 o'clock as i was at the airport they were watching shows <laughs> sitting there at 5 in the morning where have you heard people watching stories and you know consuming stories so that's the power of stories right now and when we have good platform and of course good internet we are home when you go into the villages and when you see people with their phones watching series watching all kinds of uh, consuming all kinds of stories um 
It has a positive, it has a negative also. But the positive is that they're engaged in the form of storytelling and we as, as storytellers have uh, the capability to inspire, aspire, make people laugh, cry, or at least be uh, consumed with that whole thing. And the, and the best part is like I was telling you all in the room, uh, is that when my mother doesn't call me in the evening, I know that she's watching and she's having a very good time. So the next birthday, she says, please buy me a, a, a tablet, a tablet yeah. uh, an iPad or something. I know why she wants me to, and she's happy. And when she can consume her fiction shows, which is again on uh, replayed on, on the app, and she can keep watching her Tamil shows at the same time, her Marathi shows at the same time, her Hindi shows, I think we are home. We have kept our old people really busy, so <laughs> that's great. So, yeah. I think it's, an, it's a very, very interesting perspective coming from a storyteller that how this proliferation of a form factor, of a smaller device, which is always in your pocket, you said, is empowering your thought process. But the most important part is that I uh, recently, I think one year back or something, I got an award for something. I was very excited. I uh, came back. Uh, and the first thing I, is that I called my mother and I said that, you know, I got this award and she told me I already saw it. Yeah. I think that's the joy. That's the joy. That, and then I tell my driver, Dada, and he tells me, I've seen it already. That's the joy, is that they are aware and you're even more uh, cohesant to the, the things which are happening around you. Mm -hmm. So it is just not one form of storytelling. It is just not belonging to one... Uh, I think we also reflect a lot of what is happening in society with the growing age of consumerism and what is happening in society with, with beliefs and also uh, progressiveness. Mm -hmm. Our stories also reflect a lot of what audience wants and how they behave, how they, how they uh, want to see their life, how they want to see their story of their life folding out. So that's what it is. Yeah. Fair enough. We always said that uh, cinema, for one, is a reflection of the society. Um, Sajit, my next question is uh, to you. That uh, you've seen another thing that stirs the country like nothing else, which is um, breaking some world records with 59 million concurrent users uh, in the ICC Men's Cricket World Cup uh, this year. And what challenges did you foresee while serving uh, many Indias uh, and, uh, and during that program? And what sets Disney Hostar apart from a technology perspective to be uh, able to handle that kind of scale? Yeah, you know, I mean, cricket is, uh, cricket is sort of like a unifying force in, in India. And, um, you know, uh, the way I, by the way, view these records is that uh, it's our duty to serve our users, but these re the concurrent, uh, you know, which, by the way, essentially means the number of people watching something at the exact same point in time. Uh, and we had 59 million people do that. But the reason that happens is very candidly not because of us. You know, it happens because it's cricket, it's the finals, India is playing, and they've had an incredible run. You know, if, if uh, India was losing, I don't think, uh, you know, people are going to be coming. So, I, I, so we're very mindful about the fact that we need to be ready to be prepared to serve at scale that nobody else actually ever has done before. And... And cricket is the single biggest driver uh, of, of sort of, you know, viewership from that perspective. And, and this uh, Cricket World Cup, we actually, you know, ended up uh, setting the world record five times. So the top five times the number in terms of concurrent world record uh, in, in viewership wow. is, is, belongs to us predominantly and essentially because, you know, India was playing so well. So, you know, all tribute to them. And what, what we do is what, what, what we think of is that there are many Indias that we need to serve. And, and the reason for that is because, you know, devices in this room are very different to the devices that are a thousand kilometers away in a tier two, three, four, you know, town, city, village, etc. Very different. And we have to be very, very thoughtful about how we serve these different ranges of devices because... Uh, you know, there's no problem for playing videos at a high quality in this room. But it's a whole different experience where, the further out you go. And 
of course, device quality, etc., all of these things and data, the prevalence of data, all of those things have improved. But what we are constantly uh, thinking about and then simulating, that's one of the big things, you know, frankly, our, our engineering team does, and they do it so well, is simulate what those traffic looks like. How can we be ready to sort of serve that traffic? We've learned by now, because, you know, we've been doing this for a while, that, you know, the beginning of the match, there is a surge. We also, for instance, I, I don't know if the audience, uh, you, you know, does anybody want to guess, when do you think the, the, um, the sort of concurrency really peaks? Um, I can tell you that it's, it's the time when India is batting, but when India is batting, there is a specific point in time or periods in time that concurrency will really peak. What would that be? Yes, sir. So when Virat Kohli is batting is what he's saying, that's really good. And it starts there, but there's something more to that than just when Kohli is batting. Believe it or not, yes, sir, yes. So last overs is also good. So Kohli, last overs, these are good. But you know what happens is when India starts hitting fours, more than sixes, there is a big surge because people feel that now's the time the charge will happen, especially when there are a couple of fours hit in close proximity to one another, that's when it comes in. And, and we see all this and we've learned all that and we've really started to, you know, prepare our systems, uh, we build sort of redundancies, etc., so that we can continue to serve at scale that, you know, would test our system significantly. And by the way, I should call out that you know, the partnerships we have with, you know, the, the telcos we work with, uh, CDN providers uh, and others are all fairly essential to kind of being able to deliver this. I think this is, uh, again, uh, it's amusing to me that how the common perception of when it should be is quite different from what data-driven insights are giving you. Uh, that's, I think that's the power of data again. Uh, thank you for that, Sajit. And uh, Rohit, the next question that I have is around... Um, the distribution models and how OTT and, uh, distribution models are, you know, in general disrupting the entertainment industry, especially the traditional models. Also, you have seen uh, some prominent shows being aired, Emmys and Golden Globes on Lionsgate Play uh, this year and subscriber growth going up. So uh, your views on that as well as uh, how you've seen the disruptive distribution models come into play in India. I think distribution in India becomes quite critical, unlike um, the West, we are not a consolidated market. Um, and consumers have different behaviors pat behavior pattern, you know, some watch it on their tablet, some watch it on their phone, some watch it on their TV, some watch it on Apple box, some watch it through Amazon Prime video channels, some will watch it through their telco uh, bundle, some through, you know, fiber to home. Um, and we are certainly, in our, in our DNA, I feel we are a little more content-led company than just tech. Um, and we deeply sort of believe in the partnership model to solve for reach. Uh, if, you, if you go back to the linear world, uh, in, I think the core audience of English, because a large part of what we do is premium Hollywood English content, um, I think the core audience used to be about six or seven million, maybe eight million at best. Um, and, and when we started, we, I, th I think there was certainly this bias that it's probably a top 50 city phenomena. Uh, our content is getting watched in more than 3,000 cities today. Wow. Um, and a large part of that is getting solved. We, we probably have about 20 partnerships in India. Um, and, you know, our, our ethos is uh, almost to take an example from someone, someone else, it's almost the Vodafone dog. You know, we follow the consumer. So, we're constantly trying to see what consumers like to watch it in what way. And uh, we then try and work upon making it available depending on, you know, basis, basis their comfort and their ability to pay and their choice of device and uh, all of that. And I think our goal is really how can I now take it deeper from 3,000 cities to 4,000 cities um, but I think in, in, in a market like India, that becomes really important for, uh, from our point of view to solve for this. And not just in India, I'd say all the emerging markets in Asia, I think solving for distribution because we can keep getting this great content, but if nobody's watching, uh, is able to watch it, uh, you know, what's the point? I think 
award shows again to your point serves great ser purpose in that. I think there's always a there's always charm around live events. Uh, sports, of course, uh, you know, act as great unifier. Uh, award shows are great. Uh, it, it, they, they, there's sort of hardcore fan following of these award shows. People will get up early in the morning to watch them. Uh, they become very uh, nicely dovetailed into what we do in terms of premium content for our audiences. Um, I think that works beautifully for us. Uh, you know, we see we see some great engagements on those days. Um, and we, you know, with, along with distribution, again, uh, distribution for us is not just partnership, but also what can I do around content? You know, there's so many people in India who want to watch Hollywood content, but not necessarily in English. Um, you know, we've, we've now done dubbing across maybe six or seven languages. Um, because different people, like I would say, we are an English-speaking country, not necessarily entirely English-consuming. And we want to watch that big budget, you know, John Wick movie, but maybe I want to watch it in Hindi, maybe in Tamil, maybe in Telugu, right? If you, uh, you know, so yeah, I think plays a big part for us. Uh, it's been a big part of our growth story over the last three years. No, I think that is the power of Bharat, uh, as we say, that 3,000 cities in Bharat and the ubiquitous reach that, uh, you know, can work that magic which you'll probably see in all of UK, for example, in terms of numbers. So I think, um, uh, it's a it's a question that is uh, very well answered in terms of making it ubiquitous, making it uh, uh, making it accessible not only in terms of the content but in terms of vernacular capabilities. That has now become the cornerstone of cornerstone of success in India anyway. This way or that. So uh, thank you for that, Rohit. Ashwini. Uh, I seem to have lost Ashwini's question. No, I'm joking. Okay. Um, Ashwini, from a storyteller's perspective, and you've already spoken about it, uh, uh, that you have a very different perspective coming from, coming from a place where you're, both, you're wearing the, both the producer's hat as well as being an advertise, advertising uh, professional. Um, it's a mixed uh, bag of opinions that you can give from both perspectives here. But what is your view on... Uh, how streaming services, social media platforms in particular, have influenced the creation and development of content. How has that changed your process of storytelling? Um, and also, if uh, I, I've seen the Earth Sky Pictures has been doing incredibly diverse content like Bawal, Tum Se Na Ho Paega, Breakpoint, and Now Tarla, in a very very short span of time. So, how do you see production houses evolving, adapting to these emerging digital trends? Uh, I just feel that we need to coexist as creators is because uh, we are telling stories for an audience to consume our stories and to, uh, to spend some time where they get involved in the story and they forget everything else. That's what storytelling does. Sometimes it inspires you, sometimes you forget everything and you just get, you get involved in the whole story. But it's very important for us that we coexist uh, with our uh, business partners is because um, we have to follow trends. Uh, we cannot stay behind. But the one thing which will never go is the heart, the core idea that every story has some feelings and every individual has some feelings. Characters have feelings. And it uh, doesn't matter how much of a VFX we use or we use the, the, the best available technology. Uh, but in the end of the day, uh, when we have a consumer seeing a story of a mother and daughter, of a father and son, or a husband and wife, or, 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 teen, or kids who, uh, who want to do something for themselves, the startups, they are not going to be looking at what uh, way I've shot it or what kind of VFX technologies I've used. All they're going to see is that does the story touch me in some way. So here in, in the metro cities of people who are really following technology and new age methods of storytelling would definitely look into that. But then when I go into the tier two, tier three cities and I, when I go to a, a, a Hindi speaking consumer uh, who, who I'm telling the story to, like for example, it was aired at a very right time where it was for, a, it was for an audience who was talking about that you can start your own company. You can do what you feel like, you know, 
uh, you don't have to follow the trend that you have to become an engineer, you have to work in a company and work do an MBA. If you have an idea and you want to do a startup, you li don't listen to the voices around you because everyone has a say in what kind of career choices you need to make. And this is a, a this is an idea which is for uh, SSCA plus plus and SSCC also. Universal. It's a universal idea, but it is also a story idea where you have to tell it in a manner which is not very evolved. And at the same time, it was, when I say that uh, we tell stories, but it also it has to reach the right people. And it has to make the right kind of noise. To, to put that story at a time when IPL was happening is a great strategy. Uh, because the audience which we wanted has come on Hotstar. And they are also going to be seeing because it's just coexist. It's just yeah. poses and coexist. So it is just not about creating an idea and a story and saying, okay, we are going to tell the story. It is about what does, and every platform and everyone stands for something, the kind of stories they want to say. If you see the K-dramas and the fiction shows, that will never go. It's because it doesn't matter whether they have shot it in one camera setup with one single light on top. But they are the same audience who's also going to watch um, a Game of Thrones yeah. and is also going to watch the most basic show and still feel the same um, thing. And then the other part is that if you are doing something which is like really strong in terms of technology and we as filmmakers have to be in power of what kind of camera equipments are there and what is the new camera techniques and what are the kind of new lenses which are coming in and everything uh, and also be be very conscious in our minds that we are still, like Sajid said, that the phone which I'm using in here is not the phone which an audience is using in, in, uh, in a tier small tier two, three city. Yeah. And I cannot make my visuals dark. Yeah. So I have had so many fights and, you know, understanding with my, uh, with my, uh, with my backend team, especially when we, we create and we have done all amazing DI and everything. And, uh, and then when the film is there on Hotstar and on Sony Live, my Fadu series, which was there, and I'm like, why is this so bright and why is it not so dark? And now I understand is because the brightness levels of a phone, if you're watching it under a sun, how's it gonna look? You're gonna, not gonna see anything. So we have to keep some things uh, at our, you know, wishes and fancies aside and just make sure that uh, the biggest complaint, you know, uh, of a lot of my clients in, in advertising was a dark mat banana, bright rakhna isko. Just keep it bright, you know, so that I see all the faces, I see all the performances and I understand that. So it is about coexistence with, with your business partners and also I think research plays a very important role. I know I'm one of the few creative people who say, you know, let's let's do a dipstick and let's do a research is because if our audience is not understanding so you you do your research and you take a few points of what you feel you can adapt and and leave the rest it's okay we, but at least a few points which in terms of storytelling in terms of understanding does that work that is what uh, we thrive on yeah i think uh, very well said and i remember uh, one of the corporate gurus once famously quoted saying that if you have an idea, take it to the lowest common denominator and see if it works there, it will work everywhere. So I do understand that some decisions are driven by what will work with the masses and that should be so to succeed in the market. So thank you so much, uh, Ashwini, for that perspective and it's a fresh perspective on the panel. I'll just do a time check. Uh, we still have some time to go. Okay, I'm afraid uh, we are up with the time that we had, but this was an insightful conversation. We touched upon emerging technologies, we touched upon the creative storytelling, and we also talked about how the power of Warnak is changing the OTT game in India. So thank you, my panelists, for joining us today, um, and uh, look forward to continuing this conversation. Thank you.